Hello everybody. Um, it's election day today, and I uh, sorry I haven't done up a video in a little while. I've been uh, a little little rough, um, but uh, just thought I'd uh, give a little bit of commentary just on my thoughts on the election. It's been an interesting on the election, and um, I can't read a lot um, because of my eyes. But uh, my dad's been giving me the polling numbers every day, and. Um, we've really been tracking the polls for the last year, and I just like, you know, it's fun, it's fun to watch it. I like following politics a bit as a sport, and, um, but it's been a really interesting election. Um, each of the main three parties have, uh, been in the lead at one point or the other, has been a lot of movement, and, um, it's, uh, a lot of interesting, interesting things have, have gone on, I, uh, um, just going over the three parties, I guess. Um, the Conservatives, in a lot of ways, are probably doing about as good as they could, but about as bad as they could in some ways. Um, the Conservatives have the upside of having probably the strongest baseline support. Um, when pollsters ask, you know, what's, what's your second choice for people? Uh, for the Conservative voters tend to be the largest group that has no second choice. And that's probably just because they are the lone conservative party now. Um, so that really puts a kind of floor on how low they can go. But, um, you know, really when you've been in power about as long as they have, um, it's pretty tough to, to hang on much longer. Um, and uh, it does look like at this point the polls predict that... Uh, the Liberals will probably head to a minority, um, so it does look like it's the end of the Stephen Harper era. And it's actually a little interesting because he's actually probably going down with his own ship, which is actually a little odd. You, Canada has a bit of a tradition of, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, party leaders changing and then having, uh, you know, somebody else take the fall. You look at uh, Brian Mulroney had Kim Campbell. Um, Pierre Trudeau had uh, John Turner, um, uh, Jean Chrétien had Paul Martin left him holding the bag for ad scam and stuff like that and facing the fallout and it's interesting that um, Stephen Harper may actually be you know, the one unelected <laughs> from his own, you know, in his own party, it's, uh, which it's just interesting, I, th I think that's a little, uh, an interesting anomaly. Um, but uh, the uh, the liberals, it, it's interesting. They uh, last year they were, you know, when Justin Trudeau was picked as leader, he was polling near majority territory, and um, the conservatives were down, you know, below twenty five percent, and so were the NDP, I believe. And um, the fact that. Uh, you know, the Liberals ended up dropping down below 25% themselves at one point in the election kind of shows, I think, um, you know, that the public weren't really sold. And the fact that it's wavered around so much, I think, says just how unsure people have been overall in this election. It, um, it's been all over the map, really. And, um, the Liberals really seemed, for the first half of the election, just to not be able to get any kind of a narrative going. Um, and uh, But they managed to, to kind of pull it together in the second half. And I think they, they made a smart move politically, which is, um, you know, Stephen Harper uh, had pulled out the attacks on the, you know, his statement, the budget will balance itself, the thing, you know, that focus on growing the economy. And um, if the economy grows you know, tax revenue will increase, and um, which would solve the deficit. And, and that was, you know, the, the logic behind that. And uh, that, I think, really harmed him for a while, but they uh, they took the public relations move of, you know, if you, uh, if you say something unpopular or, or something gets misconstrued or whatever, own it. And so, you know, at about ha the halfway mark, they stopped trying to kind of explain it and just be like, no, this is the right decision. We're going to be, you know, running the deficit to invest in the economy and stuff like that. And by switching it around, they managed to kind of kill that as an attack vector. And um, I think that was one of the main main things that started turning them around. 
Um, I, I really kind of feel bad for the NDP. Um, Tom Mulcair, you know, even before the election started, um, I kind of felt he was sitting on a potential bomb. And that was that he was, on the one hand, uh, the head of a national, you know, you know federalist party, um, left-leaning feckless party, but a lot of his support was resting on soft sovereigntists in Quebec. And, you know, if anything came up that kind of divided, you know, Canada or Quebec or, or things like that, if there was ever an issue, he'd be stuck trying to balance two sides. And something did, and that was the, um, the face veil issue. And um, which is apparently very, very um, big in Quebec. And that issue seems to have really torpedoed the NDP in Quebec and may have single-handedly revived the Bloc Québécois. And Quebec, interestingly, Quebec normally is a monolithic kind of voting bloc. They usually vote en masse for one party given in an election, it seems. And this is one of the first elections where they're really split. There's a lot of four-way races, and um, it uh, it's making it quite a run. And it's interesting how many you know three-way races, four-way races there are. It it could really even tiny voting changes could could really swing a lot of seats. So um, on the high end, the Liberals could get. A majority, but on the low end, the Conservatives could still eke out a minority. It, it really could go a lot of ways depending on relatively small changes in votes. So, anyway, it's been a really interesting election to follow. I wish my eyes were in better shape so I could, you know, read more about it and see what's going on because, you know, at best I got, I mainly get through uh, the uh, just the radio and um, that that's most of it, but. I don't know. It'll be interesting. It'll be uh, an interesting one. I, uh, you know, even if the the conservatives end up with a minority, which is unlikely, um, I I really can't see the political forces being there for the Liberals and NDP to not form a coalition. Um, uh, but if they do, you know, with the Liberals being Augustus to the NDP Caesar, uh, I, I think effectively it would be a liberal majority in that sense. It would, the liberals would, uh, would be the ones calling the shots. So anyway, it's, it's been interesting. Um, uh, I'm, the, the thing I'm probably most surprised with is, is the revival of the block. Uh, I really didn't expect that. That was something I, I did not see coming. Um, but I don't know. That's politics, I guess. It's very hard to predict. It's um, you, you never know what's going to happen, and you don't know what people are going to gravitate to. Um, but anyway, that's that's my you know comment on the election anyway. It's voting day. Um, I probably actually won't be able to vote. I'm exhausted, and uh, I should have done a mail-in ballot by the time I thought of it. I was too tired, so it's a safe riding anyway. My vote probably wouldn't have made a big difference, but, um, but I kind of feel bad that not not to it again it'll be my first federal election that i haven't voted in that i could so i'm i'm a little sad about that but anyway it's been been fun to watch so anyway